What's up guys, Devin here from American Aquarium. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new to us on this channel here, definitely stick in. This is a professional based channel. Remember to like, share. Today we're gonna to be going over power outages and what you can do for your aquarium. These principles can be applied to ponds as well. This is definitely one of those topics that's better to know what to do beforehand instead of trying to figure out what to do while in the middle of a weather or power outage issue. I'll start this one out with a story. So the founder of American Aquarium back in the day when he had a pet store in LA, California. So happened that when this power outage happened, he ended up being the only one in his area that had power. He then ended up having a news station come to the to the facility and lo and behold, the aquarium was running, cash register was running, and he was the only functioning store in the area. So these principles that he applied to that aquarium room at that fish store, these are the suggestions that we are gonna make for you guys. The two main things that we need to worry about during the power outage is gonna be our filtration cycle, so that ammonia turning into nitrates. So we have to worry about the biological filtration, still being able to process that. The next thing is the oxygen levels. The oxygen levels are gonna be important for both that biological filtration and then the fish themselves. I'll start with the simple, when the power goes out and we wanna give oxygen to the aquarium, we can simply stir the water. If, that, if this is all we have, and maybe it's a short term thing, we know it's gonna be short term, we can just simply take a paddle or a spoon and lightly stir the water. This is gonna allow for that gas exchange with the CO2 exiting the water and the oxygen entering the water. I will say that most aquariums, considering that bio load will last four hours with not being able to touch it at all. So if it's a short power outage, no big deal, but we have about four hours and then after that we need to start thinking about these solutions. The next simple solution is having a battery backup air pump on hand. This is gonna be a manual on and off, as in if the power goes out, you can flip it on. And if you wanna get fancy, you can also look for a battery air pump that has an auto on. So it plugs in and when the power goes out, it sends a signal to the air pump and automatically kicks on. In this case, you'd wanna have your biological filtration hooked up to this at all times if you wanted that automated, not having to worry about it. So you wouldn't have to worry about switching over your biological filtration. This will provide the oxygen needs for both the fish and also the bacterial load. AAP recommends having one of these on your aquariums at all times hooked up to the biological filtration. Best bet is an AAP hydro sponge that's gonna give the maximum amount of that biological filtration. This right here has saved one of our major clients back in the day when there was a fire in the mall and the whole entire facility caught fire. The aquariums were still able to run and even though things were melting around it, the fish were safe. Also a fun fact, back in the day, this was actually created by the founder of American Aquarium and has since been rebranded. But the idea of a automatic switched over uh, backup air pump came from Carl. Pretty cool. This right here is running off a double D battery, uh, which will last a long time if you're just running an air pump. Right here is a step up if you're looking for more flow, a more quality pump, and a dual outlet. It's ran by four D batteries, and they claim to have 100 hours of life. And if you're taking these principles to apply to a pond, these also could be employed. The idea with a pond is that we're gonna still wanna provide oxygen to the fish. That's gonna be the first element that's depleted. Let's remember that oxygen is driven out in higher temperatures, so this becomes more important in the warmer season. I've got two more suggestions, which quickly I'll go over the more given one, is which is having a generator on hand. This becomes more of an issue if we're trying to find that generator in the middle of a crisis, so having it on hand is best. But let's say if you don't have that generator, here's our next best suggestion, which is actually very simple. And what was used in that fish store that I was telling you about in LA, which is using a DC to AC converter hooked up to a deep cycle battery. With this setup, an aquarium for either a heater or air pump can run many, many days. And these can be joined together for having multiple batteries in a series for even longer run times. This is a best suggestion for when you're having multiple tanks that need to be ran off of this 
battery. A fully charged 24 series deep cycle battery can run a 100 watt heater for a really long time. You can join them together if you need longer. If you're gonna run more watts on that, you could uh, assume that it's gonna use it up quicker. Bad suggestion is to have these things in your garage on a trickle charger and ready to go for when there is an issue. Our best suggestion for an inverter is get the best that you can afford and look for something that has a pure sine wave. At least a 400 watt unit would be best. This option here would be better than a UPS supply, which is that battery backup. We can assume that we can get a couple hours of life on uh, say 100 watts of energy. Um, this would be okay for short term, but if we're looking for that longer term solution, it would be that deep cycle battery. If you guys are looking for some type of resource to know how long you're going to be able to run based on your power needs and the battery that you're using, we have a link in the description and the article in the description below that is a little calculator. You'll be able to know how long that setup will run for. If it's in the winter months that you lose your energy, the heat is going to be uh, one of your biggest concerns. Another option is using a propane heater inside the room, keeping the whole room warm just so that you don't have the aquarium fall into that really low range of like 40 to 50 degrees. But of course, keep a window vented during this. We do not want propane gas in the house. Other suggestions to help keep the aquarium warmer, consider a blanket over the aquarium. I've also seen styrofoam around the aquarium. You can also consider a boil water method don't have power, you can find some way to still boil water. I've seen it both done with pouring that water into a bottle and placing it in the aquarium for just slightly warmer temperature to bring that temperature up. I've also heard of just pouring little bits of boiled water in at a time just to help sustain that heat. If the power outage happens during the warmer season and we're concerned about our aquarium getting too hot, there's the classic freezing bottle method. You take regular water bottles, any bottle will work. You put it in the freezer and there's an issue, you can put it in the aquarium. This needs to be maintained as these will thaw out and uh, temperature will continue to have a swing. Another great suggestion that we have actually used is the wet towel method. So you take a towel, you get it wet, you put it over the aquarium and then you put a fan over it. This is better than just simply putting a fan over the aquarium because there's this exchange that happens with the water on the towel and it's perspiring from the aquarium and it draws the heat out. If at any time we feel like the aquarium is rising in ammonia, do use something like Seachem Prime. This will manage those toxic elements manually uh, for the time being. Also during this time, depending if we have the water, we can consider a water change. This will help oxygenate the water and in some cases bring the temperature up or down depending on what we need. After the power outage issues, we can also consider another water change. Also during this time, do consider the minerals in the tank. Something like the AAP Wonder Shell can help keep that toxicity down and stabilize. All right guys, that's all I got for you. I'm hoping to keep it quick and I am hoping this information gets out and helps some people. If you have any questions, please ask. Thank you so much for your support. Like always, tune in each week for some more information based on our professional experience. We'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.